Hello, and welcome to today's Your Author Program. My name is Lauren Kraft. Before I continue, am I echoing? <laughs> Tina, do you hear an echo? A little, a little bit. Apologies, everyone. Oh, I sound better now. Hello, and welcome to today's Your Author Program. My name is Lauren Kratz. I'm a librarian from the Octavia Lab, and I'm joined today by my colleague and friend, Tina Lerno, librarian for the digital content team of the Los Angeles Public Library. And it is our pleasure to host the Your Author Series today. So please feel free to use the chat box to communicate your thoughts, comments, and questions throughout the program. And we will try to get your questions answered by the end of the program. And also don't forget to email ecdept at lapl.org to be entered into an opportunity drawing to win a copy of today's book, which is Emma's book, The OK Witch and the Hungry Shadow. In today's Your Author program, author Emma Steinkellner will discuss her graphic novel, The OK Witch and the Hungry Shadow, the hilarious and heartwarming sequel to The OK Witch. Ma Hush uses magic to boost her confidence with disastrous results. Emma has also illustrated projects with her sister, writer Kit Steinkellner, including the teen rom-com web comic, comic Aces and the Eisner-nominated superhero coming-of-age story Kinsey. And before we begin, we also want to thank our generous donors, the Lenore S. and Bernard A. Greenberg Fund and the Library Foundation for helping the library bring these amazing authors and illustrator programs. And now, what for what we've all been waiting for, welcome Emma Steinkellner. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Hi, Emma. Hi, thank you so much for inviting me to, to hang out with you all today. Thank you, Emma, for taking the time to be here with us today. It's wonderful to have you here so we can get to know more about you, your creative process, and your work with the OK Witch in the Hungry Shadow. But first, we'd love to hear a few pages. Sure, sure, yeah. I'll, I've opened up to one of my favorite scenes. Um, this is when Moth, uh, our main character, excuse me, that's her. Um, she is, uh, she has uh, recently uh, taken an amulet from her grandmother's kind of witch realm that allows her to transform, um, be kind of um, boosted by a um, magical, kind of more confident, more um, like chill, more kind of cool version of herself. Mm -hmm. um, and she has a dream in which she actually meets the personification of this other moth who is, in fact, an evil demon and bad news for moth uh, in general. Um, so I'm going to be reading both the parts of moth and the shadow. I will try to distinguish them, make the shadow a little more evil. Um, let's, let's see if I can do that successfully. Um, <clears throat> of course, it's kind of hard to give you uh, to give you what you want when you won't let me in. I'm doing the best I can, sweetie, but you gotta really let me get to know you. And then she reaches into Moth's head, because it's a dream. Then I can see what you want, and she pulls out her brain. Um, she spins it on her finger like a basketball, and she says, and I can get it for you, abracadabra, magic. And the brain turns into a the founderella tr which is a very important contest in the book you're a demon i shouldn't be talking to you demon mean i know you're a demon you're not good for me yeah but like come on hang out with me i might actually be the best for you babe what's that supposed to mean come on i'll show you and she snaps her fingers and they're at moth school Moth says, we're at school? And, she, and the demon says, that's right, but now it's your school. You hashtag slay every day here without even hashtag trying. Moth says, is that me? She sees this kind of other moth. And the shadow says, we have to get you out of those secondhand sweaters. You smell like the 1970s. 
Once we zhuzh up your wardrobe, get some high-end product in your hair, fix that overbite, and start you on a 14-step skincare routine, you're going to be a star. Ma says, that sounds expensive and time-consuming. Besides, I like the way I do things already. If you don't care about yourself, take care of yourself, who's going to care about you? I've never really thought about it. Let me drive and you won't have to. Mm. And if you get that founderella tiara, they snap and they're in Moth's room now, you can have any guy you want, guaranteed. Who do you like? I don't have a crush on anybody. I guess some fictional characters? You're so cute. How about that Brady Ward? He's got naturally straight teeth and he plays guitar. Moth goes, um... Uh, none of this is what I want. I just want to not get humiliated on a daily basis. Mm. Ooh, an actual challenge. You could really fix that. Um, Ma, this is what I do. I have, I've taken you this far, haven't I? She snaps and they're in a party where Moth was really humiliated earlier in the book. And, uh, she, and the shadow says, remember this? When I helped you turn the humiliator into the humiliatee? Once you clinch this founderella crown, that's all anyone will ever need to know about you. I'll make them forget everything they thought they knew about Moth Hush. And Moth says, I could start over? The shadow says, the point is, Moth, it was your life really going anywhere before I got involved? You're growing up. You don't have to be this cringy, hopeless kid anymore. Magic gives you a choice. You have hope. You have me. Thank you. you. <laughs> That was excellent. And you're so good at snap finger snapping. Thank that you. Is, Thank you so much. It's like <laughs> it's honestly been an effort on my an ongoing effort in my life. Snapping and, wink, and like winking, I just got a hold of. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that you commented on that, Tina, because I was thinking that too. And you see, my snap game is not very good. So. Thank you so much. I can't. It blew my mind when I found out snapping is like the sound of it is just your finger hitting this part and it's not, it doesn't come from this. Whoa. Yeah, sorry. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to create too much chaos here. It was a big deal for me. Wow. Emma, thank you for sharing yes. this wonderful scene from your book and the snapping tips that everybody could practice at home. <laughs> we also want your advice about being a writer. So what were some of the challenges you faced with getting your work published at first? Um, it's funny you should ask. Uh, I, I mean, I feel like every every published author, well, every you know author or writer in general is going to have a different journey with getting their work seen. Um, and for me, it was a big combination of just of, of persistence and then just good old fashioned luck. Um, uh, a, a few, few years ago now, um, before, um, before I need the okay, which books, uh, I had an illustration on Instagram that a, my, that my, um, book agent, Dan, uh, saw and he emailed me, uh, and he asked if I have any book ideas. Um, and I lied and I said, yes, um, I did not at the time, but I was like, oh, this is great. I love, you know, I love drawing. I love writing. Uh, I, this is a really good opportunity and I should take advantage of it. And so I quickly came up with a few ideas and sent them over to him. He wasn't really feeling them. I came up with some more ideas. I sent them to him and, um, you know, trying not to be annoying, but also I was very enthusiastic. Um, and he, and one of them, which was a very, very early version of the OK Witch, he was like, this, I think we can do something with. Why don't you work up a sample and we'll see where, we'll see where we can go. So I made a sample, which was the first chapter, um, a very, very, very <laughs> early rough version of what is the, what became the final first chapter in uh, the OK Witch. Um, which I back and forth with him over that first chapter, I probably did, um, at least 10 versions of it, um, over the course of a year, I was still, um, working at an office during the day and doing this nights and weekends. Um, and so we, uh, and he helped me a ton, just kind of keying my work toward what is, um, 
what readers seem to want to be reading in the middle grade graphic novel space. Um, and I'm really, really thankful for that. Um, and then I, and I just put in all the work of going over and over again with this uh, first chapter and with this idea for the book, which ended up just transforming a lot. Um, so getting his attention was easier than I thought it was going to be, mm. but then getting the book in shape to show to publishers ended up being more of a, uh, more of a labor, um, been one that I was happy to do. Cause I was really, uh, you know, the more I improved on this concept and the more I worked on, um, that initial kind of that initial pitch the more I fell in love with the book and the more I was excited to make the rest of it. So then when we uh, finally um, got a, a publisher interested, uh, that's when it, that's when everything just clicked into place. Um, and so I, I would say, you know, it's just an interesting combination of like sheer luck and then like, you know, the, just the, the, the grunt work of, of, you know, trying over and over again uh, to get something creative right, which, you know, I think often people think of creativity as just this like font you can tap into and, and you know, it's, it's always at hand, but it's, that's not true at all. And, you know, you can't treat yourself like a machine where you press a button and you have a good idea or you produce a good page because it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of looking at work you've already done and knowing how to make it better and make it all that it can be. That's an excellent answer. Thank you. Um, I know you write, so uh, the moth books you wrote and drew, but yeah. you've also worked with your sister. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. how does that, how does that, I, I'm curious like how the process differs when you work by yourself, when you work with her, and then if there's any sort of like you revert to kind of childhood fighting or, or how, that, <laughs> how that goes? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I make the Okay Witch books um, on my own. And, and generally, uh, since Keats, I've made all my middle grade graphic novels uh, by myself because I, I really like working with myself and being able to just uh, have, have, a whole, have a whole idea that comes from me. Uh, the deal with Kinsey was uh, really, really great, though, because my sister and I had worked on, uh, like you mentioned, uh, webcomic a long time ago when I was back in high school um, and she wrote and I illustrated and it's when I was first really really getting into illustration and visual art um, and she's such a talented writer and she was like do you want to work on something together and uh, and so I mean it's interesting because uh, when I've looked back on that art and I don't think it's online anymore uh, but um, you can like or I I was really able to see the kind of progress, like, like the progress of my own art style, the, you know, for better, for lack of a better phrase, the puberty of it. And, you know, as awkward as that can be, um, really me figuring out my own art style and, and having my sister work collaborating with me. Um, I mean, she's so supportive and she, you know, mm -hmm. she's just a really, really strong uh, creative presence that, that always made me feel inspired to do my best. Um, and then with Kinsey, we had um, another collaborator, Sebastian Kadlecik, who um, he had the initial idea for the story, um, inspired by his own family. Uh, he was, you know, going to all the quinceañeras and his family and seeing his little nieces run around and play superheroes. And I'm totally botching this. He always tells it way better. But he just had this really, really um, great idea for a superhero who's a girl who gets powers when she turns 15 at her quinceanera and has them for only a year until she turns 16 and has to kind of grapple with what to do with them and how to, you know, be responsible, but also, you know, um, uh, figure out her own strength and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so that, you know, that idea came from him and he, um, you know, he was, I think he was busy at the moment, so he couldn't, ex he's a wonderful writer and illustrator also, but he couldn't execute the idea uh, because of, a, you know, his own time. And so he reached out to us and, so, and wanted to see if we were interested, also bringing, you know, just <laughs> the point of view of two people who have been teenage girls. Um, so that was a really, really great project to work on. 
And honestly, like, I, I don't have any negatives about, uh, about working with my sister that I don't have about working with myself as a writer. Like mm -hmm. mo more often than not, my only gripe is like, she'll write something that takes a long time to draw, like a crowd scene or something. But I do that too, because stories just need what you need in them. You know, like, I, like she knows how hard I work. And so when we've worked together, she doesn't take that for granted, um, which uh, I really appreciate as an artist. That being said, sometimes when I'm writing scripts for my own, uh, for, for myself to illustrate later, I put in, you know, such difficult to execute stuff that then when I'm drawing it later, I'm like cursing myself for ever having written this. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I love... Uh, I feel I, I feel like I just um, get something new working with myself. I get something new working with collaborators. Um, mm. it, it's it's all good. Do you bounce your own ideas off and and tell her about what yeah, you're I mean, working uh, on with, to get input? Yeah, with both Aces and Kinsey, I think we we had a really really nice working partnership and and like often have the same kind of creative impulses because uh, we like a lot of the same kinds of stories and kinds of genres. So, um, so it, it's just very, you know, <laughs> very fun. Awesome. Emma, I see a great comment and question mm -hmm. in the chat. So I just want to remind everyone, I know I saw it on the ticker as well. Please feel free to put your comments and questions for Emma in the chat. This one was so great. This is such a great series for self-empowerment and identity and so relatable. All the challenges and the horrors of middle school. Did your art and creativity help you survive school? Uh, that's a great question. Thank you, Catherine. Um, I mean, when I was in middle school, I, uh, I mean, I don't know if anyone can tell from my from my live reading of the book. I was way more interested in becoming an actor. Um, I like I love theater and I lo and I loved acting. And and at the you know when I was like twelve or thirteen, I was pretty sure that that was my path. It wasn't until high school that I got really really interested in illustration. It ended up channeling a lot of my kind of like more theatrical impulses into creating comics. Um, even now, like. When I'm drawing, I'll, I'll like have a really intense expression, and one of my roommates will will walk by and be like, "Are you okay?" And it's like, "No, no, no, I'm just drawing someone having an intense moment right now." So, uh, but I would say, you know, like back then, doing you know the school play or whatever, which is you know also also a creative act, um, was always great for me because it it you know I was having so much fun that it didn't matter to me what anyone thought of me um which i don't know there maybe ha should have been times when it should have because i was probably acting pretty obnoxious um but you know it, it, at the very least it didn't you know i didn't have to feel miserable over um over feeling like someone was going to judge me or um people were going to think that i looked weird um and and oftentimes they did you know I, the the Founderella thing in this book is uh, it may or may not be based on when I was nominated for Valentine Princess at the Valentine's Dance at my junior high as a joke, um, which like, again, it's not like, like now looking back on it, I'm like, oh, I should have been way sadder about that. And I think I was, but like, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it's the, at, at the same time when you have enough, things that you look forward to in your life, it makes the bad stuff not matter quite as much. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I think I've always had the sense, I come from a family of writers that like unpleasant things that happen to you, you, you get to learn from them and you, maybe you get to even write about them someday. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, and, and, you know, if you can reflect and learn from the things that you go through, then there's, then, then it's all useful eventually, even if it doesn't feel so good. Um, but I also, you know, I like looking back, I'm like, I'm sure there were moments in, you know, elementary school or junior high when I was more callous and I was more 
more like someone like Pike, um, you know, that, that I, I'm sure I've made people feel a way that I wouldn't want to feel. And so looking back and now writing books for, um, for this audience for eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, you know, <laughs> for young people, um, it makes me just reflect on, you know, I think all my readers have the potential to um, be made to feel weird and out of place. They also have the potential to make other people feel weird and out of place. And it's just kind of what you do with the knowledge that other people exist and have feelings. Um, and hopefully, I, like, I, I, I just like to write about that kind of thing because as I've reflected on myself, I know I, I don't like be, being made to feel bad and, and I don't want to, and I don't want to do that. Sorry, I feel like I went off the rails there. Yeah. But. Is that what, do you think is that what drew you to uh, writing in that middle grade space as opposed to going for younger kids or teens or? Um, I mean, the truth is like graphic novels, uh, middle grade readers just really, really, really yeah. love them uh, in a way that's pretty unique. Um, so there's, I think, a certainly uh an open door for creating those works for specifically this audience but the truth is i think it's kind of where i live um i i i think i reflect on being 12 or 13 years old um i a, a lot a lot more than being younger or older um i think it's a really really cool age where you're figuring out you're individuating, you're figuring out what you like and what you want for the first time. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Uh, I think, well, I'll ask my follow-up question, which was, do, do you use the same creative process for all your books? Mm -hmm. um, generally, Yes, like I, I do things basically in the same order where I will write a script first, edit that, and then I will like pencil all my pages, which means I just roughly sketch out every page and then I will ink them and color them and then do a bunch of edits. So the like broad timeline looks exactly the same for every book. Um, but I would say like every book teaches me something new for how to make my process more um, effective and more streamlined the next time. So, you know, I, I I would say it is the same, but a little bit better each successive time I, I, I make a book. But that being said, I'm working on kind of my fir third full graphic novel on my own right now. So, you know, we will, we will see where things go. Awesome. You may, Emma, you may not be able to answer this, but is there going to be another okay witch? Will there be an okay witch three? I can't answer more? that right now, I, unfortunately. I, I, um, I what I can not. say, well, yeah, what I can say is, um, I, I basically always plan to work on middle grade graphic novels. I, I love making them, and I always want to make stuff that has a lot of comedy and a lot of fun and a little bit of magic. So I will say that's all I'll say for now. Do you hide any secret Easter eggs or things for uh, readers to find in your books? Um, yes, like uh, they'll they'll be easier to find if you're like me or people in my family, because <laughs> uh, it's a lot of like very very niche inside jokes um, for for Stein Kilners. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm just flipping through right now and seeing if there's anything fun. Um, Oh my the cat. Does yeah. the cat is there a cat in your life that that looks like the cat in the book? You know, Laz Laszlo is is more of a creation from my imagination. I have a cat who I my my brother's cat who I love will pose for me sometimes for Laszlo, but she's she's uh not not a black cat, so they're not exactly the same. Oh, there'll be stuff, you know, like in the, um, in this big kind of cafeteria scene, I've, I've put in, uh, some people inspired by people I know in real life, mm -hmm. but like, you know, or some kids I knew, um, I'll have some names that are like modified versions of, of friends' mm -hmm. names. So mm -hmm. lots of, 
you know, lots of very, very little things. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see if there's anything else cool. Uh, the the game that they, the kind of mean game that they play at oh, Pikes yeah. Party yeah. Uh, is like, uh, kind of a modification of a, of a game that I, that I used to, that, um, that I used to be part of in college. So like, you know, just little things, but I, I always change them a little bit to serve the story better. So there you go. Cool. Um, let me see my questions. I, I'm all out of my order got all mixed up, but it's fine. Um, do you, do you work on one project at a time or are you kind of juggling different different things? Yeah, I, I pretty much only have the capacity to work on one, like, or at least to illustrate one book at a time. But usually there's a little bit of overlap. Like I'll be finishing the edits on one book while I am kind of starting to uh, write the story for the next one. So, um so yes and no. Uh, there, there's like a little bit of overlap, but generally I'm only working on, I, I've got like one main focus at a time. How long does it take from start to finish to <laughs> write a graphic novel for you? It's a doozy. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it depends. Uh, I've found that it, you know, the active time that I actually spend writing or drawing ends up being like, a year but then there are gaps in between where you know um where things are happening more on the publishing end of things that i'm not as much of a part of or i'm just commenting on as opposed to actively working on it so you know i would say yeah the time that i spend like physically making a book myself uh would be a year but then i think it it's you know you should probably tack on a few more months to that for the entire process wow does it feel like it's been a year when you when you finish? Uh -huh. <laughs> Even a little bit more. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> but please um, make make comics. Like, don't let that deter you because it's really fun. It is really fun. I promise. Do you have any advice for kids who may want to write a book or write a graphic novel? I think the. The most helpful thing for me has always been to just start. Um, like it, 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 it sounds weird, but like, I think you can, like you're always gonna have so much more information if you start writing, even if you don't feel quite ready or start drawing, even if you don't feel quite ready. Cause then you can look back and you can always change stuff. You can always, you can always change anything, but, uh, if you never start, you could get kind of lost in the planning and the feeling like you're not ready for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, getting started, even if it's a small start is, right. is really, really good. That's great advice, Emma. It's just get started, just start. Yeah. It doesn't have to be good. Yeah. Like nothing I've ever started has been good at first. Emma, what's something you know now that you wish you knew when you were first starting out writing? Um, <laughs> I feel like this is gonna totally contradict what I just said. Um, I've grown to appreciate uh, like outlining and planning out stories before mm -hmm. I start on the actual script a lot um, because I think have when your story has a strong skeleton has a strong spine uh it just becomes easier and easier to write as you go on because you know what the characters want from each other you know um you, like, like i um i had a friend who shared with me a, a really good writing exercise for characters which is you figure out you know uh, I'm going to get this totally wrong, but like you figure out what their greatest want is, what their greatest fear is, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. And none of that might make it into the final story, but getting to know your characters and ask yourself questions about them and, and coming up with the answers is going to help because then when you are writing, you know what they would do because you know them. 
uh, or you know what they, you know, what direction they would take, what reaction they would have, because because you know those characters a little bit better. So um, I've definitely grown to uh, incorporate a lot more of that kind of fundamental strengthening work in, into my writing a lot more in recent years. Do you come up with the idea for their their outfits and have all that planned out or? Oh yeah, I have no problem with that. That's like the first thing I do. I love <laughs> dressing characters. I've often said I would never dress a character in something I wouldn't wear myself. Um, so even if like the outfits are supposed to be ugly or, or I don't know, I like, I always think they're cute. So um, I, uh, yeah, I have like, of all the concept art I have, I, I, for every character, I will have every outfit that they wear in the book. And then I have a Google doc that has like ca categorized into like tops, bottoms, socks, like oh, accessories. Wow. I have like every item of clothing described so that then I can always go back to that because I always feel like, you know, one of the things that bothered me in like animated cartoons as a kid is that they're like, everyone always wore the same outfit all the time, which like, I, you know, I understand for like economical reasons why an animation production would do that um, and would have to do that. But um, I always, you know, I, I think expressing yourself with clothing, even if you don't need to be expressing yourself with clothing, like you're, you're making a choice. And so I think that's always a really interesting way to add depth to a character into storytelling is, um, is, you know, have them, have them wear what they're wearing. And then I often have, you know, I'll have them just have items of clothing that get worn different ways because no one has an unlimited wardrobe. I mean, some people do, but not the characters in my books. So yeah, I, it, it, for me, it adds like a little bit of lived in realism that, you know, I know exactly what's in all their closets. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Having worked in animation, it's definitely a cost issue to no, I'm, I'm sure. come up with different outfits. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure that there was a very practical reason for, you know, Arthur wearing the same yellow sweater all the time. <laughs> or you could imagine he had 12 of them in his closet. Yes. Yeah, I think they they there are tons of cartoons where they do that joke too. Right. And it always makes me laugh. I always like it. <laughs> Do you have anything um, in your to be read pile that you would recommend or that um, what are you reading right now? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I read a lot of like uh, nonfiction because I always like, you know, I like to feel like I'm, you know, learning while I'm reading too. Um, and I love, I love fiction. I love stories. I recently read uh, The Book of the Princess Bride again because I love I love that book it's really really wonderful um and then I've been reading a lot of Naomi Klein just you know like more newsy stuff um but in terms of like middle grade graphic novels um one that recently I guess came out like a year ago but um Twins by oh, Barry Johnson and illustrated by Shannon Wright is so so sweet um and and really really just like grounded and funny and like I mean for, for kids or for any reader who likes like realistic fiction in their graphic novels it's gorgeous. Awesome. Thank you Emma for that great recommendation because oh, yeah. we both <laughs> Tina and I both love yeah. twins. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it was so fun. Emma what who is your favorite character from the OK Witch in the Hungry Shadow and why? I mean, I like all the characters who were also in original OK Witch. I mean, I always love Moth and Laszlo and, and Moth's mom, Cal, and, and Sarah. Um, but I will say I loved writing The Shadow in, in Hungry Shadow. I like It was so much fun to just write like an out-and-out -out villain, like someone who is motivated by evil. Because, <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I feel like there's been a movement to kind of figure out the more human motivation behind villains in a lot of recent stories. And I think that's great, but I do just kind of miss an old school, like villain who does it to be bad. So, so she was really, really fun to write. That's cool. 
have you faced, do you feel like you faced any pushback or criticism about your work or about certain characters or? I mean, a lot of the criticism out there, I probably just don't know about. I don't, I don't really read reviews or, or Goodreads or anything. I think it's a great way for people to share with each other what they, what they, what, what they felt about how they've read, but um, it probably wouldn't be very helpful to me as an author to, to see any of that. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the way I draw noses, <laughs> so um, I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I probably won't change it. I, I like it. But I mean, mm -hmm. that's the thing is like, if someone has an objection to something that like, I, you know, it's just the way I do it, um, then I don't really have a problem with that. There's also, you know, if someone feels like I didn't write a character effectively or tell a story in an exciting or compelling or good way, uh, that hurts a little bit more because, you know, I, I'm critical of myself enough. So I, on some level, I'll probably agree with them because I don't think I'm perfect or infallible. Um, but I, you know, I generally do shield myself a little bit from that because, because I will criticize myself, um, enough on my own. Uh, and I would probably just be saying the same things that they are, but you know, I think it's time to play a game. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Let's do it. Tina, shall we do our rapid fire rapid questions? Fire. Let's do it. Um, I know in that we, I kind of spoiled this first one, but uh, I'm going to ask you again. So, so these are, these are just like, you know, rapid fire, boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. So don't think too hard or long on me. Um, so talking dogs or talking cats, which would be more annoying. Which would be more annoying. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I guess, I guess probably talking dogs. I, do I give a reason or do I just say? You can. <laughs> okay. No, I, I think I shared this before, but I just think talking cats, it, like a talking cat would just be like having another person in the room. I, I truly believe that. And a talking dog would be more just like, I feel like there, there would be more of a kind of running commentary. Uh, so I think, but, uh, but I think either would be really, really fun. Is that why you wrote Laszlo the way you did? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Laszlo is definitely my most kind of self-insert character. He's just kind of saying what I would say if I were there. That's awesome. Emma, moths or butterflies? I think moths. Moths are really cool. Pencils or markers? Mm. Mm -hmm. Pencils? Pencils. <laughs> Takeout or fancy restaurant? Takeout. There's no TV in a fancy <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Beaches or mountains? I think beaches, but specifically like tide pools. Mm. This is my thing. That is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to take this opportunity to remind everyone that if you have any further questions or comments for Emma, you can please put it in the chat. Please feel free. There was one comment before from Maria who said, I have a, I have an, a plot line to a story, but I need to develop the characters. Mm. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's definitely really important. Um, what I do when I'm trying to develop characters more, I think just, reaching back to what I was saying before, interviewing yourself about a character and asking yourself, you know, questions about what is, what is their daily life like? What do they want? What do they fear? I think is always a really, or, or you know, even just silly stuff like what is their favorite snack? Like I think mm -hmm. any of that kind of stuff is going to get you a lot closer to having a, a rounded character that you can do something with you can play around with and, and, you know, use them effectively in your story. I think that's such great advice. Thank you. You have to get to know your characters to tell their story. I just thought of something that, that, mm -hmm. uh, that I'd asked in the last one uh, interview, which is, do you do, what would you do if somebody approached you to make 
uh, to make the Hungry Witch into a series, a TV Ooh. series. Okay, would that be That's, something? That would be very exciting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting because you, I, I, I think. Uh, I have a lot of collaborators on my books, but ultimately a lot of the creative decisions are just up to me. Whereas for a series or a movie, those are, you know, by nature, extremely collaborative efforts. So I think there would be a lot of stuff that I would, um, that I would want to uh, get other people's input on and, and see what they would think would work, uh, how, how it would translate better into a series that would, you know, keep people watching and have satisfying episodes. Um, so it'd be interesting, but um, I think that'd be cool. <laughs> I'm, pic I'm picturing Laszlo, but. Uh, oh yeah. It would look like. Yeah, I mean, it would depend if it was, I guess, a cartoon or live action or, or something. But um, if it were live action, I would want to just get the same people who made the Salem puppet from the, from the Sabrina and the Teenage oh, Mutant. Yeah. <laughs> That thing was really cool. I really liked that. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking down at the book. <laughs> Emma, would you mind holding the book up? Oh, one yeah. More time? This is just a reminder, everyone, to please, please, please email ECDEPT at LAPL.org to be entered into an opportunity drawing to win a copy of today's book from Emma Stein Kellner, The OK Witch. Yes. Yay. And The Hungry Shadow. But also the first book, The OK Witch, you can check out with your library <laughs> card. That's it. Great book. Thank you. Lauren, do we do we have any questions in the chat? I don't see any more questions or, or comments. So we can end with a little uh, game before we say goodbye or would you rather? What do you say, Tina? Um, do you want to do Would You Rather or more questions? Ooh. Well, we have about three minutes left. So again, okay. everyone, any more questions or comments, please put it in the chat while Tina asks another question. Well, I I really want to know um, what the process of, of working during COVID mm -hmm. has been like and how did it how did it affect your your writing? How did it affect your process? Well, I, I consider myself very lucky because when we were first in kind of more intense lockdown in like spring of 2020, that's when I was working on the inking and the coloring for, uh, for Okie Witch and the Hungry Shadow, which is uh, the longest part in the process for me. And it's also just much more, um, it's just much more mechanical work. I'm not having to use my creative brain quite as much because inking I'm kind of refining all the lines on the page which is um you know it's just it's just more it's you know I'm being creative but it's a much more kind of I, like I, I've mapped out the scenes already so I don't have to make as many decisions I'm just kind of refining those lines and then adding color again can be um you know be it's just, uh, sorry, I'm trying to find a way to explain this. Uh, it's just more, I don't quite have to use um, my decision-making brain the way I do when I'm writing or when I'm doing my rough sketches. So uh, I didn't have to call upon that part of my brain, uh, which was great because I wasn't feeling particularly inspired uh, by, by being uh, locked down, but it was keeping me inside and doing work so it all hit at a very um convenient time i guess um and then when it was time for me to start um thinking about new ideas for for new books uh i was i was finding myself at a loss for ideas more than i usually am so you know getting out and taking walks or being a little easy on myself and taking breaks uh soon tight uh <laughs> time to you know get a snack or get a drink of water um, really, really helped me put myself at ease a lot more, which helped me be more creative and get more inspired. Do you use, uh, do you draw on paper or you use a Cintiq or an iPad? So I use, uh, I use a Wacom tablet and she's been with me for going on 12 years at this point, I think. 
uh, my top, my stylus for that is held together with electrical tape at this point. Uh, but I love her. I don't, I would, I, would, I don't want to change really. Um, but so I've been, I, I, you know, plug that into my computer and then I use uh, Adobe Photoshop for illustrating. Um, I, I've like tried uh, incorporating a little more traditional art into the process, but I find for all the edits that I have to do, it's so much easier to do things digitally. Um, but then again, that's just up to the individual artist. That's just how I work. Awesome. And I see another comment in the chat. What Los Angeles Public Library branch do you visit? Oh, that's a good question. I've moved around. Um, so I've uh, called a couple of um, branches home, um, but right now I uh, go to the West Los Angeles branch the most. Uh, that's the closest to me. Um, but there was also the one near Larchmont I used to go to. What? I'm not sure what that precise one is called, um, but- it um, Memorial or Coenga? It might be, yeah. Sorry, I wish I were. I wish I had a little more uh, information on hand, but um, but you're you're both Studio City, right? Is that I'm, I'm or... Pasadena. Oh, okay. Well, we both used to work at the Studio City Library. <laughs> when I think of Larchmont, I think of all. Oh, there's so many good restaurants mm -hmm. on that street. Uh, it's such a nice little area over there. Yeah, it's a good place to get sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought this would be a, a great last question, mm -hmm. which is how do your fans contact you? Social media, mm -hmm. email, your website? Yeah, the best way, if you have like a question you want to send to me, um, the best way to get in contact is write to me through my website. There's a little kind of contact page um, and I will I will get it and I will uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Emma, I used that to contact you to be on the children's chatting with yes, Authors did. Podcast. And it worked, yeah. didn't it? It did. Just <laughs> let everyone know. If you want to contact Emma, go to her website. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's a great we... question in the chat or the comment. Tina, do you want to read it? Oh, the, from Francesca. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. She says, my son is really excited to start reading the series now, and we're going to find the first book at the library right now. Oh, it is available. It's it's also available on our streaming on uh, Hoopla. Mm -hmm. So yes. if you can't find a physical copy, you can download that immediately. That's so exciting. Reading. No, yeah. Hoopla is a gem. That's, mm. that's where it's at. Yeah. Um, yeah that's so exciting. Great. I'm so excited for him. <laughs> All right. Well, we are we we're at our time, or yes. Lauren, are we? We are at our time. We are well. We want to thank you for joining us today. And um, oh, there there goes my <laughs> somebody entered my home. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us today, and we hope you enjoyed this conversation with author Emma Steinkellner. And remember to visit lapl.org to read more books in 2022. And our next year author is set for April 22nd with science fiction and fantasy writer Jessica Maison as she discusses her young adult trilogy, Plastic Girl. Mm -hmm. The series imagines humanity's future if the climate crisis goes unmitigated. The book sparks conversations around conservation, biology, genetics, and evolution, as well as the role of myths and storytelling in confronting existential threats. Wow. Uh, so we hope to see you then. And I'd like to end by expressing how much uh, we appreciate your support. The success of all our library programs could not happen without our viewers like you. So thank you. And thank you, Emma. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay.